you have your Bibles with you this morning, if you turn uh, to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 6 is where we'll look in for our text this morning. And while you're turning there, as always, I request that you remember me in prayer as your pastor. Uh, I certainly need that, and uh, I always need to be found in the will of God, and that is a very difficult thing. Jeremiah chapter 6, and we're going to begin reading in the 10th verse. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 10, the Bible says, To whom shall I speak and give warning? that they may hear. Behold, the ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord unto them is a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary upon the children abroad, and upon the assembly of the young men together. And even the husband and the wife shall be taken, and the age with them that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned into others with their fields and their wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. They have healed also the herd of the daughter of, of thy people, Please, uh, excuse me, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed, and were they committed abominations? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall, as at the time I visit them, and shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask the, and ask for the old paths where there is where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also, I set a watchman over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Amen. That's right. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we thank you for meeting with us. We pray that we would never take that for granted, but see it as precious and good. We pray that you would stir the hearts of your people that are here today. God, help us to worship you as we ought. Lord, save the lost that meet among us. Lord, uh, that you would stir their hearts even today and that they would see their condition and that they would cry out for mercy and grace. God, open our eyes as we live the last days. Make us humble to your word. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory for it, for it's in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Now, you don't see a lot of preaching from the book of Jeremiah in the modern day, and I think a lot of that is because it's not a feel-good book. It's not a happy book. It's not a rejoicing book but rather it is a book with warning. It's a book about repentance. It's a book about turning back to the Almighty. Now we serve a great and wonderful and forgiving and loving God, but you know what? We live in a day where it is very, very difficult. Uh, sin gets into our lives almost before we even recognize it. And the reason we don't recognize it as we ought it's just all around us all the time. It's just commonplace. Uh, uh, there was a woman at work the other day, and they're talking about dressing up for Halloween. Of course, they know better than to start that with me, and they leave me alone. And, and this woman, uh, very much like what Jarrett was preaching on this morning, and she said, oh, I would even dress up and wear a dress. I mean, that's stink in the nostrils of the Almighty. In other words, she was a sodomite woman, and she thought it would be funny to dress like a woman. Now, that's where we're at. That, 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 that's where we've arrived in 2022. And listen, church, it's not going to get better, but we need to be aware of it. We, we, when those things happen, uh, uh, the, the text says we can't even blush anymore. Well, we ought to be able to blush. That ought to be make us mad. 
that ought to humiliate us. It ought to make us ashamed. Uh, even nowadays, did we do it? No. But it's our nation, and we ought to be ashamed. We, 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 we ought to, when no one else can see it, we ought to find the Word of God precious and good. So that was in the very same day that Jeremiah lived, and Jeremiah warned them and warned them and warned them, and yet and still they were swept away into captivity. And you know, we as the Lord's men and as the Lord's churches don't give up on warning. Is it going to do any good? Not for everybody, but you know what? It will for some. That's right. I fully believe that. I believe if, if all the redeemed were, were already redeemed, we'd be home with the Lord. I, I really believe that it, when, when the years of grace are finished and that last individual is genuinely saved, I think we'll be out of here. And, and I look forward to the day. But until then, I'm going to keep on preaching. And those of you that can sing, you keep on singing. Until then, the ministry is not done in any shape, form, or fashion. So we find that uh, Jeremiah begins to describe his day in a very grim way. First of all, he says, to whom shall I speak and give warning? Now, hadn't happened to me yet. Uh, I've always had somebody listen to me, but when we, we first started the work at Dover, there was more than once I preached to Donna and uh, our three children, and we had Zachariah then, I guess you could say four children, and that was it. To whom? Church says, who's going to listen to me? Who, who, who's going to hear the words? Somebody might be discouraged with a handful of people what's more than what he had. He knew very pointedly that no one was going to listen. But did he stop? Absolutely not. Uh, see, knowing that no, no one was going to listen didn't validate in Jeremiah, in Jeremiah not to say anything. The warning still had to come. To whom shall I speak and give warning and that they may hear? Behold, the ear is uncircumcised. Now, we, uh, we live in a day and age of a people with uncircumcised ears. The all of the revelation, especially the church letters, and uh, what you remember the theme of it? To hit to hit to him who have an ear, let him hear. You know what that says? That that some don't have a functional ear. Now that doesn't mean I, I I'm losing my natural hearing, but praise be to God, I have my spiritual hearing. And isn't it a wonderful thing that when the Almighty turns your spiritual ears on. Now, part of my hearing is due to age, and part of my hearing loss is done to some, due to some surgery I had a number of years ago. You know what? Today, even, us, even those of us that have good spiritual hearing, it can be dulled by the world. It, it can be dulled by exposure. You know what the biggest reason for hearing loss is? Listen. Uh, hearing too loud of sounds and it damages your ears. And you know what? Again, we're among that every day. We're seeing, it, it's not, it, not only is it ignored, it, it's past being ignored, it's celebrated. You know, uh, I jokingly said one time to uh, a, a, a guy at work and, uh, and, uh, I said, well, you know, if that bunch is having uh, a gay pride day, won't we have a street pride day? And you know what? His, I said, me and Donna will go. And I said, we'll even hold hands. And he says, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. That would be offensive. And I said, what do you think that mess is to me? That's what we're teaching our children. Yeah. By the way, that, that boy is a social worker. You know what? Good man, I love him to death, but he's been brainwashed to defend people that don't need defense. That, that, that's your modern day school system. And, and so we find here in Jeremiah's day, his biggest concern was that no one was going to listen. And more than that, they didn't even have the ability to listen. 
And, and so he, he expressed concerns for his ministry. Verse 11, because they won't listen, because they won't hear, therefore I am full of the fury of the Lord. Now, if you underline in your Bible, you underline that because we've been taught, oh, you can't do that. You're going to hurt somebody's feelings. Hate the sin, not the sinner. Well, you know what it says here? It says that uh, Jeremiah was so mad that he couldn't stand still. Well, when are we going to get when, when are we going to get mad about sin in the United States? When are we going to get mad about these people ruling whether they want to be said so or not? You know what? They're still in the minority this morning, but they don't want you to think they are. See, we we need as the Lord's people to get some backbone to stand up to say. You know what? <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> uh, you're not going to be teaching my children that. We we need to we need to get some backbone and say, hey, uh, that ought not to be. And, and and so we see as the Lord's people that that we ought to make some type of spiritual stance. Therefore, I'm full of fear, the fury of the Lord. Now, I want you to see that Jeremiah qualifies it of the Lord. Now, we can get mad in the flesh and be disgusted in the flesh, and you know what? Like everything else in the flesh, it's, gonna, it's not going to accomplish anything. Because when we're riding in the flesh, it's just as depraved as everybody else's. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary from holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of the young man together. For even, for even the husband with his wife shall be taken and the aged with him that is full of days. So I want you to see the Lord God says to the prophet Jeremiah, I'm going to pour out my wrath. And I want you to see that nobody is in exclusion. He said from the young to the old men, every one of them is going to get pulled, poured for the full fury of my wrath. You know what? That's scary to me. Yeah. It is. And, and you know, are, are we a people that serve God? Sure we are. Hope we are. Hope we're genuine. I hope we're serving the Lord. But see, nationally, our nation has hit rock bottom. We're, we're going to get the full wrath of God, whether, whether we appreciate it. And, and you know what? Don't get mad at God. His righteous character demands it. Right? He's being true to himself. Right. And, and, and so we see then... As the Lord's people, we need to listen to that kind of preaching today. It's offensive to many, but it's what we need. Verse 13, for from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. Now, I want you to see apparently that the primary sin, the beginning sin of Israel in that day was wanting what other people had. You know, that's been the condition of our country since about 1945. The end of the Second World War, keeping up with the Joneses, Joneses became a standard. Everybody left the South, went to Detroit, Granite City, earned their big money, wanted their, their nice houses, and if someone got a two-bedroom, the next one wanted a three-bedroom. And on and on we go. Covetousness. You know what? Hell, and, and we're all that way. When someone gets a nice new home, <laughs> can't help it, but you can't help it being just a little bit, man, that's a nice house. <laughs> right? And then you go back home to your double wide. Right? See, that's man's, that's man's thinking, ain't it? Covetousness. I think that's ruled our country. It, it, most World War II generations are five generations away now. Uh, Brother Junior's father was a World War II veteran, and my grandchildren now. That's five generations. Can you imagine 
the debauchery that can happen, the downhill run in five generations, roughly a hundred years. That's where we're at. And that's where the, day, the nation of Israel is at. But praise be to God, we have a remedy. We have the Son of God. We have the Lord Jesus Christ intervening on our behalf. But don't ignore what's going on around you. The, I, I think that's been the, the pitfall of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ for the last uh, 50 years is keeping their mouth shut. Where are we taught in Scripture to do that? Jeremiah was giving a wonderful warning say, listen, judgment is coming. Judgment is on the way. Then he says in verse 14, they healed also the herd of the daughter of my, of my people saying, peace, peace when there is no peace. Now, verse 14 is very interesting because it starts out with a seemingly uh, nice line. They had healed also the hurt of the daughter. Man, that's, that sounds pretty good. I don't want any of my daughters to hurt, right? But this is the thing. <laughs> it was a lie. It, it, it was a lie. You know what? Israel was hurting desperately. So why, why didn't they get it? Why didn't they see it? Well, I can tell you why. Because they were proper, prosperous financially and spiritually dead. That, that's why they didn't get it. That's why they didn't see it. That's why they didn't know it. Because they were looking at the things of this present world. And we, it, it's happening on all levels, even today. Oh, it's so much greater since President Biden is. Uh, they pay $10 an hour, $12 an hour at McDonald's. Well, what good does that do you when milk is 8 bucks a gallon? You see what I'm saying? But you know what? you got them hook, line, and sinker thinking, that, that man, that's amazing. I'm going to go say that you want fries with that. Right? <coughs> And we've, wrote, we've raised up. The most dangerous thing that is now has, has finally happened. There rose up a nation, a, a generation that knew not God. And we're here. Started, like I said, about, about the end of World War II. Those men learned to deal with their... <laughs> With, with, with the memories, the horrible things they saw, and having known many World War II veterans, they would not discuss them. They would not say anything about it. But see, they, they treated it with liquor. And instead of saying to their wife, you know what? I, I saw babies killed by the mass over there. I saw people vaporized when that bomb landed on Hiroshima. And, and talking about it, they kept it quiet, and they, they soothed their conscience with this right here. And their wives and their children headed off to church. And they stayed at home. Second generation. Those, those that only went to church with mama. They didn't go. But you know what they did? And all of us will remember this. You're going to go to church with grandma. Right? That was about in the 70s. Then came the generation, we're just not going. And now those children, that was my generation. Now those children don't even know what church is. And, and we've arrived. And, and so in Jeremiah's day, it was a duplicate day. It was the very same thing. And he was giving a heartfelt warning because this lie Everything is fine. Everything is good. You remember, does anybody remember Biden's campaign promise? Build back better. Remember? Lord help us. Where have we gotten to now? So we see the lies that can happen. And we can see the deception that, that comes with that. And, and so we see that our day is likened very much into the days of Jeremiah. And so what do you do about it? What is the answer? Verse 15, and they 
And were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Again, just like Jared was uh, uh, preaching or teaching on early. Were they ashamed? No, they have parades about it. They celebrate their sin. Uh, they think huh, they think they're right. Nay, committed. Ab huh, nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Now you think about yourself because your blushing is your own thing. What what makes you blush still? I know. Uh, my work, and I don't really even remember what they were talking about. I'm sure it was something they opened to be. Uh, we're sitting at what we call morning meeting one morning, and somebody said something, and my face was boof, went red. And they made fun of me. They made fun of me. You know why? Because I still had enough about me that I blushed. I was like, they don't know what to be talking about. People that blush today, that are embarrassed, they say, you know what, that's that's simple. We don't need to we don't need to think about that. They're in the minority, and when they are in the minority, they get made fun of. Mm -hmm. These kids that are coming up, listen to me, children, you're gonna get made fun of. If you stick to the stuff, you will be made fun of. Take it in stride. Keep going. And you know what? That's easy for me to say uh, at 50, nearly 54 years old. But I'll tell you what, I've been there. I understand it. And you need to, you may, you need to remain true unto your Lord. <laughs> so a nation so filthy and so, so consumed with sin, people couldn't even blush about what was, being, what was going on and, and what was being presented. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. As the time, at that time shall I, that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Now, uh, how many people have ever played tug of war? Surely, I hope so. I hope I ain't dating myself that bad. What happens when one man goes? Rest, that's when you let it right? The whole line goes with you. That's what these people are doing. You hang on long enough to sin, it's going to bring you down. And it'll bring down everyone with you. Now, men, who's the anchor man when you're, paying, when you're playing tug of war? You are. And when you fall or you give up, the rest of them's coming with you. You know, Jeremiah, I mean, excuse me, Joshua said it best. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And you know what? If you follow the history of Israel, probably him uh, and one more was probably the only two saved in the whole four and a half million that came out. And, and, and so, so sometimes very singularly, we have to make this commitment. This is where we're going to stand. And that's what it was in Jeremiah's day as well. Verse 16, thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. That's a very unusual statement. Stand ye in the ways, plural, and see. Now, uh, the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right in the men, but the end thereof is death. And he also says, straight is, straight is the way, and narrow is the gate that leadeth unto eternal life. So I think it's very, very singular. It says, stand in the ways. Now, if I'm here at the, at the switch, at the fork in the road, you know what? I can learn a whole lot just by sitting here. And I can see the majority of the world going that way, having a good time, having
having plenty of money. And, and you know, we always think about the dope smokers and the, the meth, the meth eaters and all that on this on this destructive path, and no doubt they are there. But you know who else is there? The rich, the famous. They're on that same road. Don't look, don't, don't miss the fact that very, very nice people head out in hell every day. Uh, that, that's hard for us to remember, is it not? And so, and then if we stand here long enough, we can see the few that go up the straight path and watch them as well. So he says, stand and learn. Look at what's going on around us. Be aware. You know, sometimes I see people, I really believe they could get hit by a truck just because they're not paying attention. And you're like, you want to slap them and say, look around you for a minute. We're not that much better off spiritually, are we? Look around. See what's going on. Notice what's about you. Then he says, and ask for the old paths. Have you ever asked for those? I want the old paths. I have to have some work done on my old truck. Now, for the Andersons, I have an old truck. It's 51. And uh, I don't pay much attention to it. And you know, that's a good example. I wanted one, and I wanted one since I was 16. That's been way past 30 years. You know, now that I got it, you know, don't, I don't pay much attention to it. And, and that's the nature of man. You know, that, that's just who we are. But I want you to see one reason I liked it. It's the old paths. Very simple. Now, mine had been updated. But the original truck, because I had an original one too that I never fixed up, there were five pedals across the bottom. Most people couldn't even tell you what to do with three, much less with five. That's the old path, was it not? Now, we live in a day and age where religion, the old path is very undesirable. Sunday school and preaching. Y'all don't even have a band. All right? Y'all don't even have children's church. You know, we've had that a lot of people come here, and it's usually one trip. What do y'all have for the children? Preaching. Right? <laughs> and they're gone. The old ways. The old ways were men dressed like men and women dressed like women. Yeah. The old ways where preaching was thus saith the Lord and not a little fairy tale that makes everyone feel good. The old ways. The old ways where the church is the people and this place here is just our meeting house that God granted us. The old ways. Walk in the old ways where the simple belief in the gospel and the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, he shed his sweet blood for us, he died on the cross and rose again and bought our redemption with his own precious blood. Give me the old paths. Get, let me walk therein. But you know what? Just like it was in Jeremiah's day, notice what it says. And they said... We will not walk therein. You know why? This flesh, and believe me, I understand it. We love entertainment. Mm -hmm. TV, music, beach, whatever you want. We absolutely love. Why, why do these big churches that have... Uh, worship, what are, I can't even think of the name of what, uh, worship centers. You know why, that, you know why that's so big? Because it feels good to the flesh. We like that stuff. And the boring of seeing and hearing <laughs> preaching is the old way. But dear friend, let me remind you of this, it's the good way. 
It's how the Lord saved my soul. And everybody <laughs> that I had much confidence in, that's how they were saved as well. And so he, he gives them this reminder, and they said no. Verse 17. Also, I set a watchman over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Now, why is that significant? What does a trumpet tell you to do? It tells you to march. It tells you when to stay still. It tells you when to draw your sword. And it tells you when to keep it in its sleeves. In other words, we're not going to be obedient. We refuse to be obedient. We refuse to listen to the counsel of the Almighty. We won't hear the trumpet. That's what we're having, is it not? In a day where we... Uh, the trumpet is still being sound, no doubt. <laughs> Certainly we can't be the only group that's left, right? The trumpet is out there on all the continents. And nobody's listening. Don't be surprised. You know when Jeremiah lived? Long, long before Christ. And it was happening then too. Don't be discouraged. The, the discouragement of the devil will bring you to naught. But you remember that our God is much greater. Now, I want to go with you. Uh, in verse 18, very quickly, the results of this attitude. Therefore, hear ye, na hear ye nations and know O congregation that is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but, re but rejected it. Now, just very briefly, I want you to see one that made my, made my heart tremble, even the fruit of their thoughts. They were going to harvest the, the fruit of just what they thought about. Does that, does, that not, does that not stop you in your tracks? Stuff you never did, but yet, stir, yet and still you thought deeply about it. He said, that's what you're going to harvest on. To what purpose cometh there uh, to me an incense from Sheba? And the sweet came from a far country. Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor are your sacrifices sweet unto me. Now, I'll make one com comment there, and we're going to leave off there one more place after that. He says, your sacrifices mean nothing to me. They're not sweet. You know what? It's sometimes our nature to pretend everything is fine spiritually mm -hmm. when it's not. Mm -hmm. It means nothing to the Almighty. Right. Oh, how I love Jesus on Sunday. And on Monday at work, you de deny, deny his holy name. Yeah. You know what that is? That's blasphemy of the worst sort. And, and, and so we find that we certainly have a better option. We certainly don't have to be with the realm that got washed away and taken into captivity yet again. We can be the Jeremiah's. We can enjoy the Word of God. We can stand when there's no one else left to stand. We can be the ones who make a difference, and certainly we should. And the method that we do that, the way that it happens, is the complete person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go with me to the Gospel of John very quickly, chapter 20. John chapter 20, our dear Lord Jesus Christ had suffered the penalty of my sin and everyone else that is truly redeemed. And he had risen again victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And we begin in verse chapter 20, verse 19. Then the same day, and this is, uh, this is Sunday, the first day of the week, the Lord's day, not the Sabbath. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, 
when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Now, all through his ministry, the Lord preached peace because he knew conflict would be all around us. He knew desperation would be the, uh, would be the theme of our day. But there is peace. Those of you that are redeemed this morning certainly understand a peace, the Bible says, that passeth all understanding. When the waves are rough and the twin towers are going down, he whispers gently in your ear, peace. When all rage is breaking through, all he has to do is get there and say, peace be still. And immediately, that's the, that's the God we serve. You know, I want to be in the middle of a, uh, uh, of a God, a mighty, a mighty person of God, that all that is under His dominion, I want to be close to Him. Don't you? I want to be near unto Him because He'll save me and, and the trials that lay ahead. And so He comes into them with the very same uh, story that He preached to them in His earthly ministry, peace. Verse 27, then say it, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, verse 18, uh, verse 20, excuse me. And when he had so said, he shewed unto them his hand, his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Now, here they, they literally saw the Lord with their carnal eye. But we see him by faith. We just sung of that faith, uh, of, our, uh, of our confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. What confidence do you hold in him? You know what? I think he is sufficient for the most vile sin that I've ever committed. And, and he is sufficient for that. Verse 21. And when Jesus... Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. So he's giving them the commission. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And, and let me say this, I won't go deep into the, 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 the person of the Holy Ghost, but that's in reality, and that is a, a great strength the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit it, it is the, the person of God that is here and now. Not the Lord Jesus Christ because the Lord Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. You know what makes the gospel real to somebody? The Holy Ghost. That's where it goes from empty words on a page to the thrilling salvation of a soul. That is the difference. And so he gives that to them. Verse 23, whosoever sins be remit, uh, you remit, they shall be remitted unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained unto them. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples before told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now that's the attitude of the flesh. Now, this is, you know, the, comp the redemption, the salvation of the apostles was somewhat complicated because the atonement had not yet been happened, had not yet occurred. But if you remember, uh, uh, Peter in Matthew 16, what did he say? He said, whom do ye say that I am? And he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Well, apparently Thomas had not had that experience because he wanted to see it in the flesh. I'm gonna ram my hand in there and I'm gonna be validated. You know, you know why people believe in baptismal regeneration? Because it's something they can see and hear. That's right. 
You know why people believe church membership is all you need? Because a few votes of a hand is something you can see and hear. You know, until the Lord saved me, salvation was somewhat elusive. I didn't understand it. Didn't know what people were talking about. But one day, blessed be his name, he saved me. And it all made sense. And everything fell in place. And so we see why Thomas's attitude may seem offensive to us. We all are the same way. Verse 26, again, another reason we don't observe the Sabbath. And after eight days, again, his disciples were within and Thomas was with them. Now, we count days by, like, say today is Sunday, tomorrow's Monday, that's one day. They would have counted it as Jews as two. Today is one day, Monday's the next day. So when it says eight days, it didn't mean that he came on a Monday night. I mean, he came back on Sunday night because they count all days. In other words, Sunday is the Lord's day. What did, what did Paul, I mean, it shouldn't, what did John say? on the hour of Patmos. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, not on the Sabbath. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And, and so we see, we, we see the differences there and why we no longer meet uh, on the seventh day. I've heard people, some people say Seventh Day Baptists, well, they're not Baptists. Uh, they, they don't observe the Word of God. Notice what he says, and after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. Third time they heard the message, y'all think y'all get it back. <laughs> they heard the same message three times in a week. <laughs> Notice also, he came through the walls. No longer hindered by the elements of this flesh, he came straight through the wall preached the message and said, peace be unto you. He said, Thomas, <laughs> reach hither your finger and thrust it into my hands. Get your hand and run it into my side. <laughs> now, I don't think Thomas ever did it. One thing the scripture don't say that he did. And the other thing immediately, my Lord and my God. Sure. That's when I think old Thomas was saved. He saw Jesus for who he was. Mm -hmm. His own Lord. Lord means that's the one you, you look up to and is the leader of your life. Yeah. And your God is the omnipotent one in heaven. Yeah. He saw both persons in that one being and he was saved. What a rich, wonderful blessing. And at least history's account, not the Bible, so we can take history for what it's worth. <laughs> Some 20 years later, Thomas lost his head over it. You know what the best salvation there is? One that will take you to gra the grave still being faithful. That, that's one you can bank on. Hmm. So, do you know the Lord? Nothing, nothing can, nothing else matters. The older I get, the more I see Nothing else matters. I was at home all day by myself yesterday with Joey. Take it back, I had Joey with me. And I was walking dogs and cooking turkeys and all kinds of crazy stuff. And uh, what I learned, that old house is very, very quiet when you're by, by yourself. And I thought to myself, when the girls marry, we don't need this much house. Things sure change with time, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. 30 years ago, instead of a four bedroom, I only thought I needed a six bedroom. Things change, don't they? What time has taught me there's one needful thing. Remember, that's what the Lord said to Mary. Actually, he addressed it to Martha. There's one thing that's needful. And Mary has chosen that good part. Yeah. And it will not be taken from her. And what was the good part? Just sitting at the feet of Jesus 
not worrying about the dishes. <laughs> what about you? Are, are you there this morning? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Has He saved your soul? And deeper than that, I don't know if you go deeper than that, but just as important, are you in good fellowship with Him? Just because you're saved don't mean that you're in sweet fellowship. That's a, that's a Southern Baptist thing. Right? Where are you at? You know, it, it's not in, it, it's nothing wrong with questioning yourself. And that, the Bible counsels you to do so. Make your calling and election sure. That, 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 that's a command from Peter or James. We, we need 